Hey, it's Carrie from Classic Cottage Art and Antiques in Bowling Green, Virginia, and you're on my YouTube channel, Creating a Classic Cottage. Let's get started on today's project, an update of a planter. So here's the before picture of my planter, and it was pretty ugly. So my steps to get this prepared were I clean it with white lightning cleaner really well. I put mine in a spray bottle to make it easier to apply. Then I wipe it off and then I rinse it with clear water. Because this is plastic, I really want to use a bonding primer. I also actually sanded this a little bit beforehand. I like to use a synthetic brush with my slick stick, which is made for slick surfaces. I want to make sure this paint sticks really, really well. So I simply just paint it on. Now be sure you use smooth strokes for this because whatever strokes are underneath is what's going to show in your final finish. If you have brush strokes in your slick stick, you will have brush strokes in your final finish. And we don't want that. We're trying to update this planner. like to make sure I get underneath the legs because they'll show as well. And we're going to do all four sides and a little bit of the lip on the inside since it's going to show. Um, I kill plants, so I have another potted plant I'm going to put in this planter, but it needs to look a little nicer for out front of the shop. So now that all the sides are painted and dry, I'm going to paint with the color Peacock. It's a nice bright blue, and again, we're just going to do the same thing. We're just going to make sure your slick stick is completely dry, and then just paint. Paint on all four sides and then underneath the legs, just to make sure that it looks pretty. This is going to be our base coat for our blending. So you may notice I'm using a Dixie Belle synthetic brush, and I'm doing this because it leaves much smoother strokes. If you've seen my other videos on reducing brush strokes, this is one of the reasons, the main reasons I like to use a synthetic brush. Plus the paint goes on so smooth with these brushes. So again, you're gonna to wanna to cover all four sides and on the inside. And I have a tip to get the inside so you don't get the dirt all over your brush. I didn't wanna take the dirt out and start over. Uh, so I just painted with the dirt in there. Notice I'm also spraying my brush to keep it damp, to keep the paint moving. Another trick there for um, reducing brush strokes. Keep your paint brush damp and you'll have less brush strokes there too. And it'll make the paint move a lot better and you'll just have a nicer finish in the end. Here's a really cool trick to paint the, the inside while the dirt's still in it. And what you do is you take a sponge, and I like the one the scrubby on one side. I cut a part of it off, it's about the size I need, and then I cut most of the sponge part off because I don't really need it. It also gives me more control. I then pour my paint in a paper plate, and it's super easy to get this just where you want it with a sponge. As a matter of fact, I paint with a sponge a lot of times in, in tight spaces. So basically, you just load the paint on your sponge. Wipe off most of it because it's going to make a mess if you don't. And then, basically, you just paint it on. Super simple. And the scrubby part actually just gives you a little bit 
more control, something to hold on to so that it's easier to control. And you're going to find this is a really easy way to paint in tight spots like this. Keep it damp just like you would your paintbrush and then just paint it on. Super simple tip of the day for you. And once you get the inside done, you can let it dry until the next step. Notice I'm not going all the way down to the dirt line, and that's okay because what's going to be in the pot is going to cover that up anyways. But just make sure you get all of the corners and up to the top where it's going to show. I use the paintbrush for the corners. It's a lot easier. So now we're going to go to coat number two. This is after it's dry completely. We're going to go back with our peacock and we're going to do a second coat. Your first coat might look a little thin and that's okay because that's normally how it works out. Um, with Dixie Belle paint, I like to use very thin coats of paint and um, it, that also helps, as you might recall, reduce brush strokes. There I go again. Um, Spraying the brush to keep it damp, to keep it moving. It moves so much better when it's damp. I like to fill in the sides there and then do the center part. And basically, just go all the way around, all four sides again, and on the inside for your second coat. And then allow that to dry before the next step. So once everything is dry, we're ready for blending. So just make sure it's completely dry before you start this next step. Actually, overnight's good. So what I did this time is I propped it up so you could see. So what we're going to start with, we're going to do another little base coat, a very thin coat of our base color, which is Peacock. And I like to get the surface a little wet, and this is why you don't want to do it right away, because if you start painting with all this water right away, it will actually pull the paint up before that you've already put down. So you wanna make sure that you have a super dry base coat first. Then put a very, very thin coat of your base color before we start the blending. Doesn't have to be really thick, just a very thin color so that we can get the blending started. Once you've got your very thin coat on, you're ready to go ahead and start your blending. Um, I decided on Mermaid Tail, The Gulf, and Peacock for my blend today. Don't make it super hard on your first time out if you're going to start blending. I don't blend a lot, so I like to keep it super simple. So I'm going to start with Mermaid Tail. I'm going to mix it up, make sure it's not lumpy or anything. I'm going to pour it in my plate because I want to get it super wet. And I don't really need a whole lot. That's the cool thing about this project. You really don't need a lot of paint. I'm going to use the same brush. that I did my base coat with. Didn't change it. Some people say use separate brushes, I just do it this way. And I'm just gonna go ahead and lay it on and see how it's already starting to blend with my base coat, which is kinda what I want. And I kinda wanna do an ombre uh, light to dark look on this. Very subtle actually. So I'm starting it on the sides and then I'm gonna add it to the bottom as well. Again, don't forget underneath because you can still see that too. And it's already starting to blend a little. You can kind of see the different blend. And I started at the bottom here with my mermaid tail, which is kind of a tealy color, which goes really good with this peacock, I think. I'm trying to get them kind of evened out, I kind of blocked out where I want my colors to be. Using the same brush, I'm going to use the Gulf. I've got it in my FIFO bottle for easy application here. Again, I don't need a whole lot, so I just squirt a little bit in my plate. And I'm going to put this kind of midway. Notice I sprayed my brush to keep it damp because it was starting to dry out. And I'm just kind of putting it in the middle. And I'm working my way down to that mermaid tail. And you can see there in the middle, there's kind of a third color forming. I was kind of eyeballing this, kind of doing it as I thought it should look. 
however I thought it should look. And then I decided I wanted the peacock on the bottom. So I went back and put peacock on the bottom over the mermaid tail. That's the cool thing about this paint. You can change your mind midstream if you want to. Um, just keep it wet and it, it'll keep going. Now be careful you don't make mud. Sometimes if you mix too many colors together, you could actually make mud. These colors seem to blend very, very well together. A little more um, of the gulf up top because I went a little bit lighter at the top. I'm just kind of swishing it all together right now. And then I'm going to take um, a dry brush and blend it together a little better. It's kind of just blocked out right now. I wanted to keep the rim, the peacock color. And right now it kind of looks like a big blob. But I'm going to take my oval medium brush and it's completely dry. And I'm just going to kind of very like whisk it across there and just very lightly, hardly any pressure at all, and just blends together so well. My paint is not super wet, but it's not completely dry yet, so it's just blending really, really well. I'm getting it off the excess on my paper towel roll because I don't want to make mud. And I'm just kind of whisking it, just barely touching it really across the top there. And it's creating this nice little blend. If I don't like it, I can go back and add some more. It gives a really nice effect. And if you're gonna try this technique, I kind of recommend that you do it on a small piece like this, just to kind of get the hang of it before you try it on a big dresser or something. I'm gonna turn it around and do the other side. I'm getting some of that paint off of my brush that I had all these other colors, because I don't wanna make mud. I want my base coat of peacock to still be a peacock color mostly. So remember, we did put a base, a light coat of the base color on before we start our blending. It just seems to blend better that way, I've noticed. Okay, I want to keep my brush damp. And this is a really fun technique. It doesn't take a whole lot of skill. I mean, other people do it different ways. This is just the way I've done it, and it seems to work pretty well for me. I do like to blend on smaller pieces just for practice. Getting some of that peacock off because I don't want to make it too muddy in color. A lot of people use different brushes. I just prefer to use the one, especially when the colors are so close in tone to these colors. If you're to make a true blend, separate brushes would probably work better. But this is kind of just for fun. I'm not really being too technical about it. It's just kind of fun to, to just play with the colors. And again, if you don't like it, you can always just paint over top of it. <laughs> and we're going to add the golf in the middle again. I took the heat gun to this to dry it real quick, and then I sprayed it with this crystal clear Krylon because I didn't want to take the time for the clear coat satin or the gator hide to dry. You could use either of those if you had the time, and that's that's perfectly fine too. But this is the finished project. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. And please, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.